Kara Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. Today's painting looks complicated, but it really isn't. It's all about layering and using your brush to create texture. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette, we have raw sienna, burnt sienna, cobalt blue, a gray premix of cobalt blue and burnt sienna, quinacridone gold, a green mix of cobalt blue and quinacridone gold, green appetite genuine by Daniel Smith, a darker green premix of green appetite genuine and cobalt blue, and an olive green premix from green appetite genuine, burnt sienna and cobalt blue. You can also add some white gouache for highlights. Color alternatives are listed below. The Milford paper is on a block. You can use a roll of tape to set your block or surface on a slight angle to help the paint flow. We often start by wetting the entire paper with a mop or a hockey, but here you can use a one inch flat brush and some water to start painting the sky wet on dry. Your first layer can be done with a very weak mix of cobalt blue. Wet the page about one third down and then add a few strokes of raw sienna. Raw sienna is a neat color to use in your sky as it doesn't turn green as readily as other yellow pigments. Add a few strokes of cobalt to the top to darken the sky a bit. Because you are working wet on dry, you can use weaker mixes. If you work wet on wet, you need stronger pigment as the surface moisture would help to disperse the paint. Use a smaller brush and add some of the grey, cobalt and burnt sienna mix to draw the hills in the background. Just dab the paint lightly on the edge of the wet area and allow it to disperse on its own. It will flow into the sky area and create a soft edge which will give distance. The bottom edge of this mountain range forms a hard mottled edge. When you add the green premix of cobalt and quin gold for the first layer of the foreground, you will soften that edge as well. Clean the brush and add a touch of quin gold to bring variation in the background. You can use any larger brush or your flat brush to do the rest of the foreground. A flat brush will give you a different variety of brush strokes from a round brush. So experiment with your brushes to see what works for you. Use the flat to set the first layer of the foreground with a watery mix of raw sienna and a bit of quin gold. Raw sienna will diffuse the quin gold a bit, so you will get brighter or softer patches of yellow. Leave an unpainted space just off center for the footpath. Try not to make straight lines for the footpath. It will look more natural if it has curves where grasses grow into the path. Make the space a bit wider at the bottom and narrower as you go towards the horizon to keep some perspective. Now you can dip the flat in the different green mixes and add a few strokes of green to the first layer. Take note of how the brush is turned on its flat side or broad side for the different strokes. Keep the strokes light. A flat can hold a lot of water. If you press too hard, it might dump all of the paint in one spot, which will make it a bit difficult to control if you are a beginner.
Lay down a watery mix of cobalt for the footpath. Dab some of the color out if it's too dark. This layer serves to diffuse the stark whiteness of the paper. Allow the painting to dry completely. Use a smaller brush to add the next layer. Start with Quin Gold and then add strokes of the different greens. You are working wet on dry here, so there will be some hard lines. These help to create texture, so don't worry about them. As you add the different greens and yellows, the paint will flow and blend on the paper to form new greens and yellows. So don't fiddle with it too much. Allow the paint to do its own thing. If you want to soften some of the edges or spread the paint a bit more, dip your brush in water and go over the painted area. Sometimes it is useful to just dab the brush on a paper towel first to get rid of excess water, as too much moisture will cause the wet layers to bloom. Build the layers from the back to the front. Keep it soft and light in the back and use stronger pigment in the front. Try to keep some hard lines here as these will add texture and bring elements more to the foreground. Don't cover the entire first layer. Leave some of the lighter spaces to give variation in your foreground. In this painting, the focus is more on the right than on the left, so the grassland on the left does not need as much detail. Allow the colors here to spread into each other to form softer transitions. Use darker colors or stronger mixes for the immediate foreground. Now you can turn the brush sideways and use the belly of the brush to push the paint upwards. This will give you a textured grassy effect. Use the colors on the palette to build the terrain in front. If you want to bring back some light to your terrain, you can lift some areas by wetting the flat brush and gently sweeping it across the area you want to lift. Dab with a paper towel to remove the excess water. Use 
Use some of your green mixes to add texture lines to the terrain. Add a very thin tree line to the horizon. Keep your brush strokes light. Use only the tip of the brush. This is very distant, so just make a few dots and dashes. Allow the painting to dry. While you wait, create a brown mix with cobalt blue, burnt sienna and raw sienna. Use your round brush to wet the path with clean water and a tiny bit of raw sienna. Then use a thin brush and add a thin shadow line to the edge of the path. If you can keep this line as thin as possible, it will bleed gently into the wet path to form natural shadows. Make a few thin upward strokes for grasses. Again, don't overdo it. Just a few strokes here and there. Then draw a thin, broken line down the middle of the path for variation. Now for the trees. They form a lane on the right side of the painting to draw your eye into the distance. The furthest tree is the smallest and lightest with the least amount of detail. The closer you come to the foreground, the darker and more detailed the tree should be. The furthest tree is also shorter and they become taller as you move to the front. For the foliage, you can dip the brush in the yellow mixes and turn it sideways so you can use the belly. The brush will be wet, so you will set down solid strokes of paint in the back. Remember, you cannot see individual leaves so far away, so the solid color will not be a problem. Use the same brush to do the rest of the trees, working from the back to the front. By the time you get to the front, most of the paint will have been deposited, so now you should be getting more of a dry brush effect. The closer trees will have looser leaves showing. Add some of the green in the same way. Don't fiddle too much. Just lay the paint down and let it spread naturally. The more paint you have on the brush, the more solid the marks will be. If you think your brush is too wet, Dab it on a paper towel before laying down the strokes. Use the brown with a bit of the green to make shadows under the trees. Always keep the perspective in mind. The trees are smaller in the distance and larger in front, so the tree tops become higher in the front. Let the painting dry. 
To add a bit of interest, you can paint a small fence on the left side. Make short, thin, upright strokes for the fence poles and draw broken lines for the cross beams. If you want to add buildings in the distance, you can use white gouache for the walls and some of the brown for the roofs. Add a few highlights with a gouache to bring back some light here and there. To achieve this kind of texture, you need to work with hard and soft lines, light against dark, and layers. Play around with the colors on your palette to make different greens. As an alternative for green appetite genuine, you can mix sap green with sepia for a warmer green or add a touch of French ultramarine to the mix for a cooler green. Let us know which are your favorite greens in the comments below. If you have worked with Green Appetite Genian, we would love to hear about your experience. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you soon. Bye con Dios.